nice. Before we fall into forever love with Dreamcatcher, we wanted to let you know we were able to film and edit this video thanks to the support we get from our Patreon. Since we are unable to monetize any of our React videos uploaded to this channel, it is our Patreon that provides us the funding to continue making our channel bigger and better. We have a lot of interesting and exclusive content uploaded to our Patreon, which includes uncut reactions to this song, reactions to Japanese releases, live stages, games, and more. We hope everyone has a happy Halloween and let's get this reaction started. You are now reacting to the seven member girl group Dreamcatcher in their 2021 release because in celebration of Halloween spoopiness! Spooky scary. Ah! Let's see, wait. How am I gonna do this? Do you need help? One? Yeah, maybe. Hold your headphones, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit! This is so funny. <laughs> wait. Wow! I'm a unicorn. Because his lyrical theme is about when love becomes dark and obsessive. Dreamcatchers sing about trying to become the perfect person that their crush would fall for in hopes of being with them forever. But when their crush points out that they're acting creepy and threatens to reject them, they calmly reply with they know that they're being creepy and they aren't worried because a different voice of mine will call out to you instead. No! No! So it's like it's fine because I know that strange. I'm being creepy. I'm sorry I'm playing bad in my lesson, at least I know I'm being bad. <laughs> This leads us to the doppelganger concept of the music video inspired by the horror movie Us. Jump. Wait! Ah! Gosh! Nice. Fun fact, the reason why B-E is capitalized in the title is because Be e means sadness in Chinese. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah! Mm. So you can interpret the song in two different ways. You can interpret that their love is what is driving them to become obsessive. And the other one is, is that it's their desperation to escape their sadness that is making them become obsessive with their crush. The song is composed by Olaunder and Lees. Wow. <laughs> so much symbolism in this. Yes. In the deep lore. Ready. Don't change yourself for no man. Don't Damn do straight. it. Damn straight. <laughs> All right. Mm. Shall we, as the kids say, S get it. S, S get it. S get it. S get it. Okay. Yep. All right, three, two, one. Okay, it fits the spoopy. I like it. It's fun. Oh, this does sound like a- Like an anime opening. Da, da, da. That's a really good hook. It is. I'm already singing it. It's a really tight groove. You hear that piano? Is that a piano? Mm -hmm. I like how it doubles the rhythm. Ooh. Look what's going on with the rhythm there. I like the extra harmonies, the lower harmonies going on. The layering. They broke it down. That genre switched fast. Nice. It's a good job. It keeps a sort of a music box quality, but mm -hmm. while, not, certainly help. while not directly using a music box tone. Nice. Oh, wow. They're layering on that first verse motif. That's <laughs> clever. It's like, oh. Mm. Oh. A little drum and bass action. Oh. Yeah, a little nice. psycho. psycho. Yeah. I like how the drums kind of sounded like far away in that section. Yeah. There's a lot of layers going on. Um. Wow. The bass, man. Oh, dude, the guitar sounds like that in there. It rocks. Mm. It's like that pulling for a And there's voices singing along with that like synth in the back. I think that adds such a harmonious, humanistic quality to the song. 
Ah. Mm. The clock ticking sound effect. Mm. I like this melody. I love that, that raised six. Oh, major six, yeah. Oh, that flip, register flip. Mm. Beautiful. Oh. oh. Ah. What a fat piano sound. Oh. Ah. Uh. Oh yeah. I could scream that. Mm, that's some shouty. Cause I love you. Mmm. We just got upgraded. I oh, that love was so that. nice. That was so densely packed with yeah. They've got such a great sound. Like you can listen to you're like, oh yeah, I know who this is. I like the juxtaposition ju <laughs> Juxtap the juxtaposition <laughs> of the, the rock, you know, guitar sound and then like a trap beat kind of vibe, but then it like would switch up a lot. I mean, it like classic kind of K-pop vibe of, you know, there's probably five or six different distinct genres within the one song. And it's like every like eight bars, it's like, oh, what's it gonna do next? What's it gonna do next? And so you have like a like actual just like hard rock section and then it's like the guitar thing keeps going and then there's like a trap beat that comes in and then it's like chill like I don't know like almost lo-fi piano sound yeah, right. for that that like pre-chorus part. The, the pre-chorus is like super like traditional kind of heavy rock metal yeah, drum set that. sounds with like the big china cymbals. Once you get into the chorus it's like super produced, really crisp, clean drum sounds. I don't know exactly what they are, but it's like a super tight, hi-hat, super punchy snare. And like, there's not a lot of depth to the bass, but it kind of lends itself to the lighter quality of that chorus. There's a really like distinct tonal changes mm -hmm. that are very pronounced. Especially that rap verse where they, where they put in that like straight up initial D like nightcore poop poop text drum boom boom It was a nice way to like pick up the pace into a rap verse. How, how do you how do you describe that? It, it sounds kind of like trashy almost but not not like in a bad way. It's oh I love <laughs> I love this. It's boom, boom. That that part was sick. DNB is like one of my favorite drum groups ever. And they juxtaposed it here with like the four on the floor kick in the punk section. Yeah. Yeah. And also like the more pop sections, but like the it's a pretty sparse kick pattern. Um, so it kind of like drops the bottom out while still being, you know, exciting. I think one of the song's really big strengths is its atmosphere. Because in order to create the illusion that you're scaring your audience, so to speak, or you're paying homage to like those kind of scarier sounds, you have to be very convincing in your atmosphere. And sort of how you do that is by making your song really dense without sounding cluttered. And I think how they did that is they were able to, first of all, if you notice the drums, there were times and it was like a very like boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba. And then the chorus, it was like boom, 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 boom. It was like, it was twice as slow. And then with the, after that, then it was kind of like mixed and then it went back into the boom, ba, boom, ba, and back into the double time, which I thought was really interesting because it allowed us to kind of feel different beat groupings. So it allows us to go like, oh, this is picking up momentum, this is picking up momentum, and now we're feeling a different kind of pocket, which I thought was really cool. I also thought the instrumentation was really interesting. Rafi touched on the glockenspiel and touched on, I think there was, cause it was out of left field enough so that way it sounded creepy, <laughs> which I really enjoyed. And also the distortion on the guitars was really good. It just was so interesting to hear those two sounds collide in this song. And I just enjoyed it quite a bit. That was some serious spookiness. <laughs> You're so adorable! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of like a struggle though. <laughs> what was spooky about it? Mm, the chimes. Yeah. Yeah. And also like that dun 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 dun. That melody sounds spooky. Why is that? Oh, minor.
I think it's more about the instrument. Probably that yeah. too. I don't know why like people just use that instrument so many times as it represents spooky. It all starts with the Tchaikovsky, that one. Nutcracker. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then John Williams used it in, in Harry Potter to represent like kind of like kind of spookiness. So mm. probably they used it too. <laughs> they had a lot of really good horror catchphrases. There was the like dun, 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 like Horror they scream. I don't know what that's from. Yeah, that, that's yeah. what I mean. This scream, scream. Um, they had the music boxy, dollhousey mm -hmm. torture, torture sound. Torture. Uh, and what else am I thinking of? Did they have any outstanding tritones that we might have missed? If I was gonna write a spooky song, I'd just be like triton, triton, like over and over again. The closest I think I can think I can think of is in that melody. Ba 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 da ba da ba ba. Ba da ba ba. Starts from ba da da ba 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 ba. Would kind of be tritony, but it's not really like accentuating it. What I like though is that motif you hear at the very beginning, you hear it through a bunch of different instruments, and it sneaks its way into like a couple of the choruses and the pre choruses as well in different instrumentations. They had a lot they of have... instrumentation trade offs, which they I did. like, where and it I like, just that flows into different timbres. I'm like, oh, wow. It wasn't the main melody each time, but the second half of the chorus, it is. Like, they have the vocal singing that motif. But you have heard it before, and it feels like it gets elevated. They're layering it so that the, it, your attention gets drawn to it. Um, more and more gradually. There was like a triplet thing in there. I think I missed it, I talked over it. Yeah, yeah right there, there's that really satisfying, like almost uh, diminution of the rhythm. Mm -hmm. So like she starts in a one, two, three, four, triplet, da, da. Wait, shoot, Wait, I gotta hear that again, sorry. Does she keep it in triplet feel? She does, right? <laughs> Oh no, she doesn't. Okay, yeah. Da, 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 da. So it goes triplet to da da da. Yeah. Yeah. Triplets. <laughs> we love Make triplets. Everything better. Okay, let's keep. Oh wait. <laughs> We're out. I love God. this. No, th this like breakdown section where it just like goes into the halftime like super heavy and then the build up like they they go into that double time feel again. Yeah. Like it just speeds up into the drop. <laughs> oh, what a great drop. Another thing I liked about the, the accenting the B of because is they give a bit of space and they use that contour to, to leave that room out so you have to wait in this. It's okay, so sad. It does, it does the drop like right on the eighth too. Bum, bow, wow. Is that why it's so satisfying? It yeah, so it's it's really satisfying. Cause sometimes I I feel like it it like the the wow wow sound. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just too much space. It, yeah, it, there's too much space, but they literally did it. It makes like, it super punchy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, with just the higher synth sounds. I liked it. Yep. Beethoven! There is a haunting quality to Furley's with the half step. There's like a very haunting, dreary quality. Using that half step to lead into like this minor arpeggiation. It's thunderous. It's very tumult. Like it's very. It's like Beethoven. First time I heard it, I thought it was okay. The second time I heard it, I was instantly like, oh no, this doesn't really work. Because. Yeah, yeah, I don't know the, why. I the mean, sharp A was just kind of out of place. It felt it, the weird. sharp A was a little bit there, and yeah, it felt like it was just trying to squeeze it in. It didn't gel with the rest of the melody at all. And the reason it worked for me the first time is probably because I wasn't listening to the melody as carefully. And I'm just like, was that for Elise? And the second time was, that was for Elise. Oh, I don't think that worked as well. So it was, you know, first time reaction sort of thing. And apparently, the, I, I don't know if this is true, but he wrote the piece for... I think he wrote it for... For Elise. Yeah, for Elise. I think it was for a student named Elise, yes. but something happened but also where it might she... Have been Therese. There's a chance that um, Beethoven's handwriting was too sloppy, so whoever read it as Elise might have read it wrong. Evidence suggests that it's for a student of his named Therese, and he's constantly in love with the students. It's like his, it's like his whole thing, and like proposed to them and everything. In fact, the Moonlight Sonata was written for a student that he wanted to propose to and everything. But hey, I guess it creates good music sometimes, because like, for Elise is fine, <laughs> but it's no Moonlight Sonata. 
I wonder if the producers knew that because they know that the song is about loving and being obsessed with someone and mm. doing stuff for them so they would fall for you. So that's maybe why they chose for Elise. That could be it. You know, now, now that we discussed it, if that is the reason, I, I do like the usage of it a little more. See, see now, now that's the thing is like Beethoven tried to be the perfect self and then she was like, no. So then his evil side came out. His doppelganger came out and said, fuck you, I'm gonna make a really, really hard piece. And then he went. <laughs> so, come on, Elise. Thank you for dumping him because we got good music out of it. What was your favorite section of the song and why? Beethoven. No, my favorite section was the bridge. Let us see why. That. Na, 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 na. Ba, 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 ba. I can't do this. It just sounds like it's going to major there. But what chord is major? <laughs> ah, let me, let me, let me dig. Ah! So this is an E minor. This is a race to see who can figure out. There's a raise. So it's Mixolydian. Am I close? Please tell me I'm close. <laughs> Guys, it's a race sick. Now the crazy thing. Dorian, it's Dorian! What? It's fucking Dorian! She got it? She got it! Wait one second. Cause there's a race six. Dorian is a minor scale with a race six, y'all. So it goes. That's so good. Oh yeah, that part, the bridge, it, yeah. it, it kind of brightened up a little bit because uh -huh. everything is so dark, it's just natural minor, and then suddenly it goes to Dorian, that feels kind of good. Also, they were adding like more um, tertiary harmonies on top of the, the chords that they were doing before. Harmonies. Well, chords are built out of thirds mainly in Western practice, so you have what? Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> you have, it's an E. And then they added a nine up top, an F, so. And that just sounds kind of nice because it's two fifths on top of each other. Which sounds nice. What fruit is that? Apple. That's an apple? Mm-hmm. I'm allergic. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> 